whether it's high rank or the lowest of the low, I'm always searching for the next legend. And what I'm looking for when I'm looking for a legend is I'm looking for uniqueness. I'm looking for something that makes them stand out from the thousands of players that we have. And I've had my community game legends like uh, Snippy, for example, who sniped many a Kings. And we've had our low elo legends, right? We have a series where it's all noobs and they're doing their thing. But it's really hard to find high elo and high ranked legends because to play at a high rank, you kind of need to play a game a certain way. High level Age of Empires 2, you almost always know what to expect. And that is simply due to the fact that they play so good that they will punish any attempt at diversity. You know that legend, the legend of Huang, the player who made ton of militia and would make tons of siege and turned it into Celts and the whole Celt ETC thing? Well, if you're a fan of Huang, I think you're about to be a fan of this guy. Listen up. Okay, so here we are in one of quite a few games I'm going to show you from this player. Now, this player is known as Yu Pudding. It is a Taiwanese player. Uh, it was around 2100 ELO, maybe like 2200 ELO, okay? Um, so that is top 150, maybe even top 100, depending on the day, all right? But if you're wondering why we're not seeing you putting on our screen, it is because you putting has changed his name to Robert Giescar. Uh I looked up the pronunciation for that, still probably butchered it, but I didn't know why he would be named this. It didn't make a lot of sense, and I don't know that much about Taiwan and Taiwanese names, but I was kind of thinking that doesn't sound like a name of someone from Taiwan. So I Googled it, and this is actually a Norman adventurer who is remembered for the conquest of southern Italy and Sicily. So we have a Sicilian strategy, and I am so excited. I'm even more excited that I just found that out. Full transparency, I just recorded this video, and I just made a comment the first time. I was like, I don't know what that name means. Figured I'd probably look like an idiot if I didn't check. I checked. The fact that he added this name into the twist of things makes me excited. Okay, so we have a lot to break down. So here's the deal. Sicilians is not a civilization that's just very good in Age of Empires 2, okay? And I complained a lot about this civ when they introduced it. And the main thing I complained about for like a year and a half, two years, until they finally did a slight tweak, which we'll talk about in a second, was that Sicilians have a unique identity that no one else has, and the devs didn't balance the civ around it. Until recently, okay? And that unique thing is the fact that they can make a dungeon, which is a tower building that's unique to them. No other civilization can do it. And then they have the sergeant, which you could see up here, okay? This sergeant can be created from that dungeon, and then the sergeant can produce even more dungeons, okay? And I remember, I'm, I'm going to keep it short, trust me. I remember, I thought that was really cool when they introduced the Sicilians. It didn't really make sense for anyone to make the dungeon. Uh, people weren't really doing it. And then the devs just gave them a night bonus, which, you know, fair enough, they still have that. But I was just like, come on, like, let's give us something to spice up the early game. And so what they did recently, I think it was like three or four months ago now, my timetable could be way off, is they made a tweak to the dungeon where that can basically replace the barracks. So if you wanted to go scout rush, for example, you could make a dungeon and then you could make a stable or an archer range, which is very nice. Uh, there's some cool things you could do. Like, for example, you could use it as a defensive measure to protect a woodline and a gold, and then you could just go archers. But anyways, this strategy is with the Sicilians at a high level when no one in their right minds would be picking Sicilians to play with Sicilians in the game, right? Uh, we will speed up at various points, by the way, because we have a few games to look through. Uh, but we're, let's do it now. Red actually forgot where the Rhino was. I noticed, I'm not sure if you picked up on it. But Red is heading up towards Feudal Age. So let's see. Um, his opponent is a player named Cello. I did also translate this. And Google tells me this is because you hate me, question mark. I have no clue what that would mean here. I don't know if these guys played together before. Maybe Blue's confusing Red as someone else. Red was very confused by it as well. But anyways, his opponent's playing as the Khmer, and uh, Khmer are normally known for fast rushing. Fast farming, fast rushing. You could really do a lot in early feudal age with the Khmer because you don't have to build a barracks before a stable or an archer range. Very sloppy here for blue. Red shows up and sees the bears. Okay. So, what is Red doing at home? So, Red's going to go four on wood. Okay. And he's going to go one on gold. He's like, hmm, interesting. Now, remember the one on gold? 
because I'm going to show you three games, and the one on gold is actually going to play a role in one of the future games. It's really interesting aspect to this strat. So nothing's that crazy here, right? He's got a decent amount on wood. He's got one on gold. And then he's got berries and whatever food he wants underneath the TC. But you'll notice he's going forward. And he has scouted his opponent. So he sees the wood lines on the back. He sees the golds on the back. And he sees the berries are forward. And there he goes. Now his opponent, Blue, um, he does not have Loom currently. Uh, he's trying to skip Loom and just have as many villagers as possible because that does delay build production a little bit. Not sure what happened there because he just placed a house on top of a house he deleted, but uh, maybe he just misclicked a little bit. Anyways, Blue doesn't know where the enemy is right now. So he's looking for that. So th that aspect's probably not the best. And here comes Red with the four villagers. So he doesn't know his opponent doesn't have Loom yet. Loom's now on the way. And there's a dungeon. Now, from Blue's perspective, his villagers actually just switched position there. Do you notice that? They just switched to this bush and had to walk around, and they noticed the dungeon. Now, Blue runs forward. Villager didn't have Loom for the first hit. And he wants to go rush that down, which is what a lot of players do these days against the tower rush. And Red nicely like, builds some houses around it, and he's going to make this. Now, guys, if anyone dungeon rushes you at a high level these days... You are never seeing the sergeant. It is simply just the dungeon. It's just the tower aspect, right? But look at this. Blue might soon be regretting that he is staying underneath this because Red's keeping the dungeon alive, and now there's a sergeant. It's 50 HP. It's 5 attack. It's very comparable to a man-at-arm, only it has a little bit more pierce armor. And there's more things to talk about with this as well. Um, but let's just... Let's just keep it simple for now. Feudal Age stats are as follows down below. 50 HP, 5 attack. Okay, so Blue immediately is like, okay, I'm up against infantry. I need to make archers. And he's trying to defend his eco with quick walls. Now, meanwhile, as he has to do all of this, I don't know what this feels doing here, but Red is actually just going to make a lumber camp. And Blue is trying desperately to counterattack, which is one of the best things you can do against a forward. But he's so scared... And so freaked out by this, because he also hasn't really seen it before, I'm sure. Nice move there from Blue to hop in the house and then out of it with the Khmer. He doesn't actually know where the enemy is. And so this is where I'm going to fast forward a little bit, because I have more games to show you. But I want to show you what Red isn't doing at home. He's not really playing into anything else. He goes for the, the sergeants, right? And he hasn't killed anything. Sorry, I misclicked. Okay. He does send a Spearman home because he knows his opponent's going scout. So he sent that Spearman from the dungeon. He doesn't go to stone to make more dungeons, which is something you might expect. And these are just basically to buy time. He wants to do damage, but if he doesn't do damage, he has a plan to finish the game much like Huang does, if you know Huang. Now, this is... Blue's going to see that this is on my channel, and he's going to be like really frustrated with himself <laughs> because he still hasn't found uh you pudding but he's gonna find him now and this has given red time to wall red doesn't normally play very defensive at all at home like this walling is way more than you'll normally see from him blue dives in does get hit by the tc didn't expect there to be a spearman there i'm sure and in the end red defends for now okay so what does red do he heals up the sergeants so you're probably like, okay, T90. Well, he didn't kill any bills. He's literally no army. Is he not going to be punished for this? Well, yeah, he, he is. There, there's potential for his opponent to punish this for sure. But he's building up towards Castle Age. And in Castle Age, the sergeant gets stronger. In Castle Age, the sergeant gets more HP. It goes up to 8 base attack. And it also has more armor. So anyways, the weak one goes back to heal up. Full HP one comes out just to try and pick away there. And here's Blue. Now, I've thought about this because I've watched through these games a bunch of times. I would never have my villagers exposed like this. It is just far too uncomfortable for me. Why, when your opponent has scouts and archers, would you have your villagers exposed? Well, it's because he wants Castle Age. And having watched enough games, and I can't wait to show you more, it is expected for him. It is okay for you putting to lose villagers. Like, if he, if he loses three or four villagers, he's like, okay, at least I didn't lose eight. 
So anyways, he goes to the market. He goes to blacksmith, right? So he has those buildings available. Um, he didn't mine any more stone for any more dungeons. So he can't actually build a tower or, or I guess a dungeon in this case at home. He sells what's left of his stone. And he's going to go double mining camp on gold. Tons on gold to buy res. Now think about the investment from blue. He's made scouts. He also spent food and gold on fletching. So he spent all the res to upgrade this. He's also spent a lot of wood and a lot of gold on archers. This is standard. Brandon just passing here from the sergeants. And now Blue's looking to break in. Red has nothing. He's two minutes away from Castleage. He should be super dead. Right? Like, th th this strategy, it, it doesn't have a lot of teeth. It doesn't have a lot behind it. Or so I thought. Because Red just knows how to commit, guys. And he knows how to commit to the one unit no one freaking expects. Okay? No one thinks... That someone's gonna make more sergeants. Because nobody makes sergeants, people. But he's healing these for a reason. Full panic mode here, though. He does try and use a runner there to distract a couple arrows. Because he realizes that Blue is about to break through. And Blue's killed three villagers in this game. Still sitting here. It was a nice save there from, from Blue. Uh, from Red, rather. And it's not gonna get any better. He's still a minute away from Castle Age. Loses another vill. Now the wood line's getting hit. Gonna lose another vill. Anything to keep this army out, basically. Because he's thinking about the push on the front. So, he does need some army to clean this up, so here he goes. Now, he's getting armor. So what's gonna happen here is he's gonna go up to uh, three pierce armor after the armor upgrade. So still taking two damage a hit from the archers. But when he's in castle age, the sergeants become stronger. So I'm going to show you one. Just look at the stats here. He's going to hit castle any second now. And look at the stats. So you get extra pierce. You get extra armor in general. You go to 8 base attack. And you go to 75 HP. When compared to a knight. Or when compared to, you know. Yeah, mainly a knight. Which is the unit you think of when you want armor in castle age. It's not really that insane. But think of the timing here. He already has 9 of them. Okay. You wouldn't be able to have 9 knights right now. So he killed two archers there. These sergeants are going to help him defend at home. And he's already waiting, ready to push with more here. So he's got what? Uh, he's going to have four plus these two that are still healing up. And he's going to try and make siege. All things considered though, right? Blue is a 7 to 1 eco KD. He's killed seven villagers. He's had less TC idle time. He has better eco upgrades flying in. Like blue is still in a really good position. He's going to aim to go nice. This you put in guy, he doesn't reseed any more farms. Okay. <laughs> it's all market. Just like our boy Huang with the Celts. And it's no longer Celt ETC, it's Sicilian ETC. He just wants to overwhelm the enemy here. As you can see, these sergeants, they don't give a crap about your TC fire. Like, what are you gonna do? Garrison? What, with all your vills? Yeah, great. Good luck losing stuff anyways. And here he comes. <laughs> okay. So interestingly enough, he's first not he's not going for the TC first. He's actually aiming to go for the gold from the opponent. And now blue hits castle. So now blue's going to make knights. Now you need food for knights. And you'll notice that all of his farms are currently garrisoned. Farmers are currently garrisoned. So he doesn't really have a lot of food. And anyways, the eco KD is now 10 to 7. Uh blue actually got through here and killed a bunch more vills. <laughs> Red, I don't even think Red's paying attention. He doesn't give a damn. He doesn't care if he loses Vils. He's gonna kill yours. <laughs> this guy's a freaking legend, man. This strategy's so cool. Look at the Vil repairing the Ram. The Ram's gonna stay up. And Blue's trying his best to pick his spots where he can. It looks like he eventually lost the scout here. So he's tried to pick off that Vil, which he does do. But as TC's down, that villager saves himself inside the Ram. And it is 13 sergeants versus four knights. And while knight does have, you know, more HP and more attack and all that, the sergeant numbers are still just way too damn strong. And blue's kind of out of res right now. He doesn't, he can't make much more. He's got three knights on our screen. Those three knights are being focused down. It does take a while, man. Like, the knights are still a stronger unit, for sure. But if you can't make Nor. You're going to have some problems. You also don't have a TC. You oftentimes assume that your opponent is making Vils behind this. He's not. 
<laughs> and uh, one of the two stables has gone down for Blue. He's still trying his best to micro here. But he, you know, after that night and this night, and then I guess the night it's on the way, he's not going to have much more. The farmers, they could drop off the food, which is kind of nice. That's cool. Because they're Khmer, they don't need the TC. They don't need a mill. But there's just so much damage to be done here. And obviously you could tell, but Blue's not going to be very pleased. And this game ends. What a freaking strat. So basically to sum it up, okay. He goes forward with the dungeon. He makes some army. He doesn't make any army at home, usually. I'm going to show you more games. Um, and it's all about killing an early castle age with still having the forward villagers available, rams and sergeants. If the game goes much longer than that, he's dead because he doesn't even produce villagers at this point. He, he just thinks the villagers that I have are enough. It's going to have to be enough. He had like everything on gold except for the two forward villagers. Insane. Resources collected in this game, blue had more. But he couldn't get the units, right? Red had just enough. The timing was there. What was the cast late? 19 minutes. Blue made scouts. Blue made archers. Blue had pretty good timings on the upgrades. I think Blue could have been to Red's base faster had he found them. But this is high level stuff. And we have a new meta here. Let's look at another. Okay, so here we are with another game. Now, for context, I downloaded six games from this player. It's not much, right? And every single game he's doing this. And I got to pick up on various aspects of, of his play. Now, the reason I found them in the first place, which I think I mentioned, but if I didn't, I'll mention it now, um, is because I was playing, and I went up against him. And I saw something, mainly the dungeon, and I was like, oh, wait a second. This is interesting. <laughs> um, our game, probably not the best for this video. If you guys have interest, you can leave a comment, and I can show you. But anyways, um, here he is again as the Sicilians. Now, this time he's up against the Mongols. And the Mongols are known as like, the civilization to be feudal age quickly. So going forward is a bit risky in my eyes. Also, Mongols have a scouting bonus, so they have a lot more vision. So in theory, the worst civilization to go forward against is the Mongols, because they're likely going to be feudal age faster than you. They're going to have a ton of food to make army, and they're also going to have the ability to scout you, in theory. Okay? Now, in this case, I don't know as much about blue, but he is still a 2K plus player. In the previous game, Cello was an a Argentinian player. Who's extremely active and knows his stuff. But again, we have uh, you putting in the red going for the Sicilian strategy. And I hope you guys are getting excited because I know I am. <laughs> so um, I, I don't want to spoil too much what happened in the game that I played red. But I do want to talk about one key component of the strat and I think why it's work working so well. And... A lot of it right now is that just the opinion on the sergeant is that it's just a bad unit. In Feudal Age, right? In Feudal Age, it's a bad unit. Even Early Castle. You saw the stats in the first game. It wasn't that crazy, right? But he had a lot of them, which is what made all the difference. So if you see a dungeon going up, you think, oh, he's towering me. But like that's a, that's a normal thought for a player because every other Civ can tower rush, right? So you think, oh, tower rush, okay. You forget about the sergeant. I think I would. I know players here would. Anyways, Red's going to do the same exact build that he did in the previous game. Where he will go to berries, and then he'll get that one villager on gold. Now, this is, this is going to be a game where scouting matters a lot here, obviously. And Blue's going to have better scouting in this game than his opponent did. Because the opponent in the... Um, or, sorry, he's going to have better scouting in this game than the previous guy did. And it, it makes things really fun here. Okay, so let's slow it down again. So what you're looking for from Blue's perspective is you're looking to find out what your opponent's strat is, right? So he sees the berries. So this would normally indicate, at least with the current meta, that it's not going to be archers. But then when you come here and you see that villager on gold, and then you, you notice he saw those villas moving around a little bit, and we're like, okay, they're going to take wood. He sees the mining camp. He now knows... I'm going to be Feudal Age pretty quick here. Actually, not faster than the opponent. But my opponent's going to go Archers. So he has that information. Now, check this out. Red's going forward now. He saw the scout was this way. So, you know, we'll do a little... We'll go back. 
This is really smart if you want to go forward. You obviously don't want him to see it. So initially he starts to go. Then he says, oh, just kidding. I'm taking trees. Blue passes. And then he says, oh, actually, I am going forward. Super cool, right? And look at his scouting, guys. Like He is a really smart player. He knows where the TC is. He knows where the wood line, where the gold, and where the berries are. And honestly, if you just look at Blue's map, this is a god tier map. I know the wood lines are pretty small, but like, look at the berries and gold in comparison. This map is garbage for red. He needs to get some value in with this type of a map. And Sicilians aren't normally known for their early damage. They're just not. Their eco bonuses, their after farm upgrades, their farms last longer. But that only pays off after you would normally be receding the farms, which is like Castle Age. It's just a whole thing. So, okay, Blue does another run around. Doesn't see a barracks yet, which might be a little confusing to him. But having seen the gold and having played hundreds, if not thousands of games, he knows this is normally archers, okay? So he's thinking, oh my god, like I'm going to be so fancy here. And I'm going to go archers too. So he tries to switch it up. So he changes his plan. And he too is going to be going archers. So he's headed over to gold. He doesn't have the range yet, which, you know, the timing is important on these things. You can tell he's desperate for it. And there's his archer range. Okay, and there's the dungeon. It is right behind the wood line. Now, I know in game number one it was on berries. If you remember game one, the wood line and the gold was on the back. He always goes for the wood if he can, not the berries. It's just in the previous game, that was the only thing on the front. So... Blue's like, I've got an amazing map to wall up, and then I'm completely safe behind this. He's not expecting this. So he sees it now, and there's the attack signal. So, again, back to my point a couple minutes ago, what you expect here is you expect, oh, I don't have that wood line anymore. So he's like, oh, okay, I could just keep these vills from running away or doing something. And now suddenly there's a sergeant. And now suddenly there's another sergeant. And now suddenly in this game, Red's going to make an archer range here. So, you know, the key for Red, because he normally doesn't wall up a lot, is that all the focus is at his opponent's base. Now remember, Blue's on archers, so here's Blue. Sergeants are pretty decent against archer fire, though, as you can see here. They're very tanky. And, you know, the starting scouts here from both. Red's is a bit weaker from getting involved in these fights, and now it's going to die. So Blue gets the first kill, but there's a lot of focus at Blue's base right now, and he has to fight some off with Vils. Loses the villager there. Vill count still even in this game, though, because Red didn't create a villager for a bit at home. So, the previous game was, what, three sergeants? On uh, this game, looks like he stopped at two. Getting pretty good value with it, but Blue's building up archer mass. And Red's going to need a few more skirms here. And just like the first game, these villagers, they don't want to get in any other scuffles. They're just going to simply chop wood here. They're just going to chill. Good job from Blue, honestly. He, I know he just lost a villager when I said that, but he does defend the attack. And here as well, like, that scout is helping out so much because the skirms could be a real problem. Now, there is something to be said about just peace of mind, right? And I think if Blue were to just drop a tower here to protect this area, he would then have peace of mind that there wouldn't be any threat here. He wants to be super fancy, and I think people in the comments on YouTube are going to appreciate this. But if you're going to compliment the guy, compliment him now. Because this, he still hasn't walled this in. So it's a nice idea. But he needs to complete all these gates somehow. And it's super messy for his eco, right? Notice he doesn't have any farms. Now what he is doing is he's keeping his archer mass pretty solid. He's got fletching on the way now. So his archers are going to have more potency in their attack. The red's healing up a weak sergeant. Looks like he did create another one here. Still just trying to pressure. Pressure, 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 pressure all the time. At this point, Blue's probably like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. What is this? What is this attack? This is so weird. Am I getting smurfed? Like, is this is this Viper right now? And like some weird account named after a, a guy from a campaign? Like, this doesn't feel real. It feels like a troll strategy. Blue did forget about this villager. And at the end of it, he's going to be three villagers down. And he still has not counterattacked Red due to Red's presence here. Now, he's thinking I can kill these skirms because he doesn't have upgrades. But look at Red at home. <laughs> he's wide open. <laughs> he's wide open. He's so exposed. And, like, at a certain point, 
in a, from a player in blue's position blue's going to switch over to this gold now um you want to counter attack players who go forward i've said it for years if someone goes forward building against you you counter attack these villagers have now uh, these units can now escape the problem is he has to respect this attack because it's done damage and he doesn't want to counter attack because they, they could still run through and do damage so notice red's decision the second he sees the archers running away he starts to try and dive in here and blue in the end has he tries to you know stay home and gets the quick walls down but does lose some archers and obviously loses some time i want to check something real quick resources collected okay red's collected more see this is the key guys it's honestly the food eco he gets decent farming eco he's as he's harassing the enemy and then oh i just punched my microphone sorry um and then he goes heavy on the gold and uses the market okay so we could we could kind of see how this is flowing so because i have more games to show you we're just going to speed through this portion of the game so blue is now he's done it he's defended from the attack and the, the this army won't find any more immediate value so he goes to counter he's going to drop a tower here because he's exposed in that area red doesn't know that there's even a gold there but he sells his stone and by the time he sees the mining camp it gets here Blue's going to be able to force down this tower. Fortunately for Blue. Blue could have lost so many more vills here. Blue? Does he actually lose all these vills? Okay, he doesn't garrison. Never mind. Blue's running away. Hello? Okay, weird moment in the game. We'll just forget all that happened. Got it. Anyways, Red spotted something here because he lost two villagers. Sorry. That probably explains why Blue was, was acting, was playing a bit weird there. Because he was focused on the micro. And look at this guy! Remember what I said in the first game? I was like, he, he expects to lose Vils. Like, he's absolutely going to lose Vils. But it's the timing on when he loses Vils that is key. He's got like 15 on gold, and he's using the market. Now, he did lose those two sergeants. Meanwhile, he's making more here. <laughs> oh, he's making more. And he's got enough skirms to come home now to help from those archers. But Blue's playing really good. Blue's like, okay, I've expanded our farming eco. That's good. We're getting more range units out. He, he's, he, I, I'm really impressed with how he's been able to move, maneuver with this army, killing the villagers there, move directly to this. He's not hesitating too much. He's hesitating a little, but who's expecting the opponent to have this economy wide open at this stage? Like, I think a lot of you watching would probably buy another dungeon in defense, right? But he doesn't want to do that. He, he's going to be focused on this push where he's making more sergeants and these villagers are getting ready. Now look at this. This is going to come off as, as kind of a diss from our legend here. But this is actually what makes him so much more exciting to me. He gets completely out micro. Like what could be more important than your gold here? Well, apparently this. <laughs> the siege workshop in his opponent's face. Um... You know, I kind of felt like he could maybe have tried to micro a little bit more there. Maybe he doesn't have the speed, though. And now, basically, all of his villagers go into the TC. But all hell's about to break loose at Blue's base. And in this game, Blue took more damage than the player did in our first game. And so now he hasn't even clicked up the cast lead yet. And these sergeants don't care. They don't care about TC fire. Nice quick house walling here from Blue. But the sergeants, they've got tons of armor now, and they've got more attack, and they've got they, they, they've got a nice little waddle as they strike. As they strike, as they run. You know what I meant. Anyways, blue gets to the wood line. Red says, great, I can get back to the gold. And here come these sergeants. These guys walk with confidence. They walk with a swagger. I can't believe I said they waddled. Villager goes down there. But, oh, have you noticed what's happening here? Well, you've got a ram with sergeants inside of it heading after the tower. Tower goes down. Whoops-a-daisies. Those villagers are going to be dead. Over here, we've got more sergeants. They found what's left of a wood line and the berries. Those villagers are going to be dead. And Blue calls the GG. I, it's wild. Also, look at this speed. According to this, if speed matters to you guys, Blue is way faster. He's way faster. He was clicking that army around, but Red gets the right amount of army. He gets the timings down, and he just commits. Very similar to the Legend of Huang, who would do his thing with the Celts. But oh, so freaking unique. I have one more game for you before we move on to that one. Resources collected. 
Look at the food and look at the gold. It was very difficult for Blue to get villagers off of wood and on the farms this game. Really difficult for him to balance his economy. None of the aggression was at Red's base when it mattered in early to mid feudal. And that's why he reached Castle Age so quickly. Another game with a faster castle. This one was 21 minutes. The previous one was about 19. But still, very impressive that he's able to do all this against the Mongols. And I loved how he just snuck forward there. Even though he's up against the Mongols and he just tried his strat anyways. Okay, here we are in our final game. And this is probably the best of the bunch, okay? Uh, this is going to play out a bit differently than what we saw in the first two games. You ready? And it really shows the depth of this guy and how he thinks about the game. So we've got our legends, uh, you putting here in the in the blue. Uh, same as before, we have Tatangu. Um, Tatangue, Tatangu, I think that's right. I believe this is an Argentinian player. Uh, apologies for not doing my homework on him. 2K plus player. And as far as I know, up and coming player. Okay. Uh, playing as Lithuanians. Now, when I watch these games from Blue, he's always up against really good civs, right? He's always up against civs that people pick in the event that someone force picks. Because otherwise, it would just go random. Um, so, what it, we saw him against Khmer. Uh, we saw him against, uh, how did I already forget? Mongols. Here we have Lithuanians. There's another game I have where he was Chinese, uh, against Chinese, rather. It actually makes the strat harder that, you know, in order to get Sicilians, you're force picking, and they probably have a good civil on the other side. Lithuanians, plus 100 food at the start, uh, plus 100 food from each TC they build, um, which is arguably stronger than when they used to start with 150 food. Plus one attack on their knights per relic collected. Faster working monasteries. Great trash units. Great weapons. I mean, it's just a good sieve. And against Sicilians, it's like, oh, uh, okay, you save wood long term on your farms. Well, this is Arabia. The game doesn't go on for very long. Oh, you get good knights, but you need a unique tech and you don't get paladin. Oh, you have archers, but you lack armor and they might even lack armor. It's just not... There's no peaks to it, guys. There's no big, exciting bonuses. Like, plus 100 food at the start feels really smooth. It allows you to do some funky little things. So I love diversity. And I love new strategies. But I love the fact that Red, he's found his own little way of playing here with the Sicilians. Yes. Okay. So um, both players just pushing in their, their food for the time being. But remember how this all works with the Sicilians. So let me just repeat it, okay? So, if you make a dungeon, you then can make an archery range and a stable. And initially, when the devs made this change, I'm very happy they ended up doing it because, I, I was, like I said, I really feel as though they should have done it much earlier. Uh, the identity for the Sicilians has not revolved around their unique unit really at all, um, at least in the way that I think they could. And when I saw the change... My first thought was, you can go archers with Sicilians in a 1v1 and really defend yourself. So if you have a wooden gold next to your, uh, like next to each other, you could make a dungeon, like here or here or here or something, and it would effectively protect your wood and your gold at the same time. That's like, well, how are you going to do damage to the guy if you can protect both of his crucial resources? And then he's also making archers? That's pretty good. That was my first thought. But the reason I... I still didn't think and still don't really think, unless your name is you pudding, that it's that strong is because no one wants to wait for their archery range until after the dungeon goes up because you have to be in feudal for the dungeon. A barracks you can make ahead of time. So right when you hit feudal, you can go archers. So you're going archers, but it's still kind of a subpar archer rush is my point. Anyways, I guess it's just kind of important that it's an option. Okay, so blue... Is scouting his opponent rather late compared to the previous game? He's going for the same exact build we saw before. He's going up very quick. He's going with one on gold. And he doesn't take the food for a while. He takes as much wood as he can. And then he's going to grab four vills, probably those four ladies there, the full HP vills, and send them forward here, right? So here he goes. Dump the dump the dum off to find my opponent's resources. Barracks. And that barracks timing should tell him that this will likely be militia and potentially even man at arms. And his whole strategy is ruined if that gets if the villagers get found. So he was sending the villagers forward. He saw that and he thinks better of it and says, you know what? Change of plans. And 
this is cool because we saw his forward. Now we get to see what happens if the opponent does something to stop the forward. Can he still play it out? He's going to see the gold. He's going to see the wood. Um, this is actually a two militia drush here from red. And this is a bit of new meta. Um, you don't see as red runs into the TC here. You don't see uh, three militia drush as much. You don't even see... Like, this is, technically speaking, it's it's what people are calling now the the Fadrush, the, the Frush, the French Rush, because Sato started it. Basically, the timing's a lot faster. The militia is real early. You still have a few legs a good time for follow-up. Anyways, disaster strikes here for Blue. As he's trying to wall up because he expects something could be coming, and he loses his scout. So, there's his dungeon. It's going to protect the wood and the gold. He doesn't know what his opponent has. He suspected something was up, but he doesn't know. Never want to be playing in the dark. But as he placed that house, I think he just noticed the militia there. And he's going to get the walls down. Really good execution to defend from this. He should be fine. Now, notice his opponent's already making the archer range. This is why I think it is should be seen as weak to just go Sicilian archers behind the dungeon. Obviously, he could have rushed the dungeon down, but still. And disaster strikes again for you pudding as he loses a weak villager that was on the wood line and the scout and the militia finding insane value this is not we're not seeing three militia we're not even seeing the man at arm upgrade and that's two villagers killed and this is the first time in the games that i've shown you where we have seen this guy take early damage so losing those villagers here it hurts so much because in all the other games there was really no pressure on the guy early Anyways, great build here from Red. Like, this is super clean. He's now going to go for the berries. And he's got archers in queue. And he's going to be making a move. Oh, shoot. I just realized that I have their colors flop, uh, swapped. And that he was red in the other games. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to re-record this. But whatever you do, please don't leave a comment. This is T90. You're the best. But I can't believe you did the color thing. Don't do that. Actually, no, don't leave that. Don't act, Please don't leave that comment, because that's actually like... In two years, I'm going to forget I said that, and then I'm going to feel like I screwed up, and I'm going to think you... Just just don't say it. Instead, you could say, Man, T90, you are flawless and make zero mistakes. There you go. I'm okay with that. It'll be sarcastic, but it's fine. Anyways, so our legend's running forward. And he must be thinking about building a dungeon, but he can't afford it. You need 175 stone for it. So he's just farming away, no range, and he's looking to do something, but in the other games, he was able to find value already, can't really find it. Anyways, Red is probably a little confused. Um, I, I would be thinking my opponent's got an archer range, so he's going to come forward, and he's walled up. I mean, his, he's on berries, he's on farms, he's on gold. This is very clean. And Blue's saving up food, and he's still going to be greedy. He's still going to try and get to Castledge. So, Tatsungu here, he probably clicks all of his archers to this position. And in doing so, runs directly into the TC with that archer. So, that's a little sloppy. But still, he's got army. He wants to apply pressure. The market will tell him his opponent's being greedy in some way. So, he's going to do his best to try and delay there. And he probably felt like he had fletching already. And if he had fletching, he would be able to sit there and hit that vill. But maybe he was reacting to this. Maybe he was doing something at home. But now he's lost three archers to the TC. And I don't need to tell you guys that that's not ideal. <laughs> right? That is far from ideal. And that gives Blue a real shot in this game again. But, you know, still a question of how is he going to be able to hold till he's in Castle Age? And what's he going to do now that he doesn't even have a forward villager? Right? Before he had four forward villagers. He's literally just running around with sergeants at a high level. <laughs> this doesn't feel normal, man. Anyways, apart from the whole archer into the town center fire thing, uh, Tatengu's played really clean. His archer production's nonstop. Look at his micro here. Look how fast he's moving after yes. the shots. Uh, can't do much here, obviously, but he wants to kill these units. And he probably thinks he's got this game in the back. Like, he probably feels like... He's killed two Vils, and his opponent's basically trolling him right now. Now, a couple important details. We see this, right? So that's 50 stone collected from those Vils. 
There will be no sergeant support. Well, that's not exactly true. Um, my point is there will be no sergeant support at the timing that Blue is looking for. Red's going to loop around here now, probably try and sit on the berries. And there go two vills. So these villagers are crucial to this strategy. Castlage time's actually just insane. The fact that he lost two vills, is playing on Arabia, and he's going Castlage at this time is nuts to me. And he's going to send sergeants forward. Now, in one minute and ten seconds, these sergeants are going to get improved stats. And Feudal Age archers are not going to be so good against them. But Red is going to end up clicking up to the next stage here in a moment. Red can still get value from this army. And then Red can make knights with an awesome knight sift. So he uses the market. He's going to click up to cast Lage as well. Pretty solid stuff. There was a just passing moment there where that archer passed the uh, sergeant. But he's trying to loop around here to the woodland. He figures I'm here. I can't really hit this, but I could maybe sit here. All of this makes perfect sense to me from Red's position. But then he sees this. He notices, and he's like, wait a second. Okay, he's tower rushing me? Let's rush it. And then, with the 18-minute Castle Age sergeants, start wrecking his villagers. And then he's probably like, are you freaking kidding me? You know how it is when you're winning a game and the bad things start to happen. You guys have been there, right? Anyways. Bad for the wood income, obviously. He does have a stable, though. He's 90 seconds away from the next stage, and now he's got to go for some crazy damage control. So... Again, another moment where I noticed that maybe the micro could be better for Blue. Like, that that was a villager that probably should have died. But he's chasing down this one. And that's going to even up the score with Eco KD. And he's just got so much here. And again, always prioritizes Castle Age Armor. And stops making vills. He's done with villagers now. It's all about if this timing will work. Now, this Donjon, able to hit some of these vills. But for the most part, Red's thinking that he could still take this gold without the dungeon hitting him. I think he can. Like, I think over here he's fine, but he's got a quick wall more. Random sergeant running past the TC. Red trying to quick wall. He does quick wall it, kind of, sort of. He fights it off. Also, these villagers are now kind of getting hit, and now Red, everything's going wrong. He's doing a million different things. He's still sitting archers at his opponent's base, but there's so much here. This is a 1957 castle time. This is a good castle time. It's amazing castle time on the back of the, the units he's gone for. Was able to kill another villager here too with those archers. But there's just units everywhere. And the wood, the big issue right now for red, it was gold, but he's now over here. So he's actually okay. He's got food in the bank and he's got gold. You could tell he panicked because he made a militia. Shout oh no, he still has the militia from before. Sorry. Shout out to me for being stupid. And also shout out to that militia. I'm overwhelmed. Now, Red doesn't have many upgrades, but he still has 100 HP and 10 attack versus 75 HP and 8 attack. The Sergeants do have more armor, though, which definitely plays its role. And, like, um, <clears throat> like the, the Sergeant player here always dives in for the TC. Actually, momentarily forgot his name. You pudding! You pudding, we pudding, we all pudding on this day. You putting always dives for the TC. He doesn't wait. He's got that dog in him that always says he needs to rush. Yeah, okay. Doesn't seem to care about these archers at all. Just, just send all the sergeants forward is his thought process. Monastery. So he's going to make some monks here in a second. And he's really hoping he can ram down this TC. But right now, Red has more vills. Red has food. Red has gold. The red has four knights, soon to be five. I think if he's got eight knights and there's no monks, he wins this easily. I think. I haven't seen it enough, and that's part of why this strategy works, is you just don't see it enough to really have a gauge on the fights. That's kind of unfortunate there for you, Pudding. I think he would have converted a knight. Red tried to run away from it because he saw the monk. For some reason, the knights just went right through the ram. Good from red, obviously. And okay, so this gets crazy from here. But I, I actually think what both players are doing is the correct call. Okay. Blue says, all right, I think his knights have left. I need to dive and kill his TC, obviously, right? But red, he's not turning around to come back. And I think it's the correct call because if you turn around to come back, you likely lose a knight to a conversion. And blue is a lot of stuff. And what do I always say? Sometimes if it's messy and it's crazy and you want someone to leave your base, 
or you want someone to have less success at your base, go to theirs. So this is going to be a base trade, okay? So here we go. Now, if there's no ram in the picture, maybe this could be okay for red. That ram's already halfway down. You've got the monk waiting. You've got these villagers running over to the ram to repair it. You've got the sergeants diving. Now here, archers... That, look how many weak villagers are here! Archers are picking away. Knights are going to show up. At the same time, we have villagers running in to repair this ram all in. We have sergeants here, and red's also in all in defense mode. So we've got villagers dying nonstop. Red's got 10 more villagers right now. And Red's doing what he can. Even fighting with villagers, which I think is good. Because if the sergeants are fighting your vills, maybe the knights are killing the sergeants. It does really seem like the sergeant armor, though, is nuts here. Right? And Red, he doesn't have many knights at home. Now, Blue, he's got 8 vills idle inside that TC. He's got 10 vills idle inside the dungeon. And he's got one more villager who's somewhere in here. Right? Oh, he's right there. <laughs> we just... I just gave you a full tour of Blue's economy. <laughs> uh, but Red is down to 16 vills. He did have to run away. Blue had made a sergeant or two. And these were kind of weak from various uh, arrows, I'm sure. And Red's probably looking at this like, who is this guy? What? Is, who is this player? What just happened? I have no wood. I have no food. All I have is gold. I can't spend just gold. I'm going to lose my stable. I won't be able to make knights, and the game's over. This this guy's insane. You pudding is insane. And this strategy, I'm not going to say it's the, the most effective strategy ever, right? If it was a trillion-dollar tournament tomorrow, should you try this? Probably not, but it's freaking insane. It is freaking insane. Again, I apologize for switching up the colors there. That is such a new move for me, but I literally just covered... All these games already with the previous cast and then i realized that i should probably google the guy's name and then i realized that he actually had chosen a name from someone who was from sicily which i thought added some flavor to the sicilian so i cast it all again holy crap though what a game really hope you guys enjoyed this video this is what age of empires 2 is about right i'm not knocking high level execution i love high level games as well but it, it adds even more excitement to me when the level's as high as it is these days and we can have people testing out new strategies and new, you know, um, build orders. And, and this one is just ridiculous. Like, he lost two villagers. He still was in Castle Age at 18 minutes. Now, I think Red probably shouldn't have lost those archers into the TC, and then maybe he does a little bit more. But I, I didn't see enough from Red to know that he would have stopped this had he not lost those archers. Because Blue's simply that good. He understands the timings on the sergeants. He understands the timing on the on the rams, and he just he gets enough. It's close, right? There's been multiple times where he's lost rams, but he just gets just enough to push that opponent's TC down, and then the game ends. Um, please let me know what you think about this strategy in the comments. I rank this guy up there with the Huang Rush, honestly. Like the Huang Rush is one of the most legendary strats in the game. Uh, Huang started with the Huns way back in the day. I made some videos on that. And he turned into Celts. Um, and honestly, he has since retired. I'm going to make a video about that eventually in dedication to our boy Huang. But I'm just very happy. Okay? And when I get really happy like this, and I've been casting all day and recording videos for you guys all day, sometimes I just don't want to say goodbye. Okay? But I've got to say goodbye. This video has to end. So again, I'll look for the comments. Please give me your thoughts on everything. And thank you for your consistent support. Watching the videos. Liking the videos. And um, thank you guys. See you in the next one.